So welcome everyone to the first ever uh, Women in Tech breakfast date by Fractio. Uh, we're very, very excited about this event. And when we had a discussion with, uh, with the Women in Tech team, we immediately knew that we want to talk about uh, professional development learning because it's at the core of what we do at Fractio. My name is Satu Heikinheimo and I'll be your host today. I work at Fractio as a service designer and, and with some development and marketing things as well. And, uh, but Jonas will tell you a little bit more about Fractio in a bit. But first, some, uh, some uh, 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 let's see, how can I change the slide? Our agenda today looks like this. So uh, in the beginning, there was this optional networking. And then we'll go to Jonas. Um, Jonas will introduce Fractio and also explain why did we choose this topic, really. And then uh, we'll go to, to Helena's, uh, Helena's speech about, um, about lifelong learning. Helena is from Citra. Then we have some. Also, some other very inspiring speakers, Anni Somustajärvi from uh, Be Healthy at Mehiläinen, and then uh, Jonas from Fraktio and Maria Aho from Barona IT. So I'm sure it will be a very, very delicious panel, panel discussion. And please be active. We have a chat on the right hand side. You see the, see the chat there, and some of you have already. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, screen does not update. Okay, let's see if we can fix that. But anyways, let's let's start. So I'll give the stage now to Jonas. Uh, let me invite you here. And Jonas will uh, tell a little bit more about what Fractio does and and why is learning at the core of an IT company? Like, why do we think it's an important thing? So let's uh, stop sharing the screen. Yes, there we have. All right. This Can you... um, Can someone uh, acknowledge in the chat that you can also uh, hear me? Cool, thanks. Um, good morning. So yeah, hello. Uh, my name is Jonas. I'm the CEO at Fractio. Uh, I've been the CEO for one year, about uh, close to one year. And, uh, but I've been working at Fractio for most of its uh, nine years of existence. And uh, I've been actually a software developer for uh, close to a decade. decade. And uh, what we what we do at Fractio, we do consulting, uh, project work, uh, dig build digital services. Uh, we also do coaching. We we have we have capabilities in uh, service design, as Sato mentioned, also in UX and UI design, web and mobile development, and uh, DevOps, and of course all the human interaction, planning, management, and that sort of glue work that brings them all together. And uh, what sets us apart and why we sort of like this topic uh, this morning is that we, uh, we aim to increase uh, our skills and knowledge and our uh, learning, learning uh, capabilities uh, and not only our own, but also our clients. So we, we aim to make our clients autonomous and independent from actually from us and build their capabilities and mastery going forward. And uh, that that's sort of a core tenet of our existence these days. And uh, yeah, it basically means cultivating learning and coaching to be able to learn efficiently, but also teach others efficiently. Um, yeah, and also uh, these days we really 
need to be able to not only learn technological skills, but also to adapt different types of organizations and different types of work that our uh, customers and clients uh, inhabit and uh, do. So uh, that's a few uh, pointers about Fractio and why this uh, uh, topic is important to us. And I think I'll give the stage back to Sato now. Yes, thank you, Jonas. And we actually have, an, have a question for uh, all the participants. Uh, you can answer on the chat. So the question is, what does lifelong learning mean to you personally? What does it mean to you? So please shoot your answers on the chat while I introduce Helena, our next speaker on the stage. So Helena Mustikainen is responsible of Citra's lifelong learning project. The aim of Citra's lifelong learning project is to support different actors in Finland in order to develop a cross-sectional policy for lifelong learning. The aim of this three-year project is to speed up the transition to lifelong learning policy in which competence and work are seen as the building materials of well-being. And I love that. So learning is learning well-being. So shoot your answers. What does lifelong learning mean to you? And I'll give the stage to Helena. Yes. No, there we go. Welcome. Welcome, Helena. So good to have you with us. Thank you, so No, this uh, I will try to share my slides. This is a new new software again. So in this Friday morning, we'll see how it how it works. Just just a minute. Application window. Yes, I. I think I'll find it there. Let's see. And if someone tells me that if I have been able to share this slide. Well, I don't see anyone, so could you say me that if it's if the slide is shit. The there. Slide. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. So good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I think it's good morning, ladies and gentlemen, but maybe mainly ladies this morning. Uh, you all answered now the question that what is lifelong learning meaning to you? And therefore, before I even start my presentation, I started with this slide. So actually what uh, Petra was facilitating an and actually the whole kind of aim and vision for lifelong learning to Finland two years ago. And this is where we actually started the work. So the same question what you had in this morning, that why is uh, lifelong learning important and what is the purpose of lifelong learning? And uh, very fast uh, we realized that it's a, such a broad subject and it's a very meaningful subject and it's a meaningful for like three levels. It's meaningful for all of us as an individuals and also for the communities. With communities we mean the working life and companies and, and all kinds of communities and also to the society level. It's very important also to the Finland and EU and global community. And why is it important? So we actually, because there were so many meanings so we describe the meanings in four different different parts and and we wanted to say that it's not just the general education so we are not just like learning something as an educational kind of thing but it's very important also for the capacity for improvement or renewal so lifelong learning is something what makes us to renew then uh Actually, it's a very important thing for inclusion and well-being. It's something that we all, all take almost as a self-branded that we are able to learn. And therefore, it, it increases our well-being. And the last, but not of course the least, 
is of course the competitiveness and economic sustainability. And that's also in all the levels. I was already introduced, so I don't go deep deep to myself. Uh, as I as Satu said, it's like we still have one more year to go go with this project. And and this is just a uh, description which all Satu also a little bit explained that what are we doing, what is our role, and our role is mainly like support societal actors in instigating systemic change and that means and the reason why we have taken this kind of role is that there is so much uh, everywhere everybody is doing something to uh, develop lifelong learning and therefore we as a stitra we wanted to always find some kind of angle where the all the other people other companies or or ministries or people they are not so therefore we started to with this kind of connect kind of role and then we did some think kind of role with some research and now we are in the do phase. Uh, what content then did we facilitate? Uh, as I said that we started with facilitation and this is like a, the overall pictures of the, of the report but I don't go deep into this picture. I just we started with this this purpose of lifelong learning and the main idea for this morning's presentation is the change drivers and also some a little bit about the aim and the change drivers we mean that because uh, when we started discussing with people three years ago and we asked them that should citra be involved in this field and if we should what would we do and then we got the answer that yes you should because there are so many different actors in the field and we need some kind of bridge builder and also uh, one of the main reasons why they said that citrus would be involved is that because it's so so important subject at this moment and then we asked that uh, really at this moment and many people said also that actually it has been important for some said even 400 years but mainly people said that we have been discussing this about 10 or 20 or 30 years but why is it really important at this moment and then we found out that actually under these three different um, titles we can fit almost everything everything under them so first the speed of change that's really rapid at the moment then the foundation, like the economic foundation, that's also a very critical thing. And then the diversity in our society. And I will go a little bit deeper in these three of them. First of all, the speed of change. Uh, always when you start uh, talking with someone about the lifelong learning. So mainly people, they have like the same kind of idea. And I think this report, what we produced, uh, which is but when we facilitated the work, it's really a, in a nutshell like everything what people think uh, at that point of time. So mainly people say that uh, that because the working work life uh, working life is changing so fast and rapidly, the one degree isn't enough. And this is something that we need modules and we don't, not just one degree. This is the <laughs> this is the talk what what the specialists are always saying and therefore we actually captured every that kind of speech we tried to put into that one one kind of like sentence that the speed of change challenges the existing system and there we describe these uh thinking like what is happening before and what we are already where we are today and what it could be in the future and today uh, all those things what we describe what is happening today they are actually the things that uh, that we would actually need more structures and a new kind of financial systems and new kind of operation models to be able to even respond to the challenges what we are what we have today and of course uh, I'm not going to uh, read those <laughs> sentences in the boxes you can do them yourself but maybe the main point uh, of course in this this slide is also with the with the covid 19 that that actually all these uh, change drivers they are just uh, they haven't lost their 
importance, but they are even more important. Like we think about the speed of chains and we think about even today, the, the breakfast meeting where we are in, it's like, uh, I don't think that two, two years ago we would have started to think about this breakfast meeting, maybe online. It would have been um, self clear that it's, that it's, we have a, some kind of breakfast, really coffee, coffee kind of meeting. But today this is normal. So something has really changed, the speed of change has really speed up during the last year. Uh, then the next one is the, uh, the financial kind of perspective that, uh, of course, the, how do we finance the lifelong learning in Finland? We, Citra, uh, made a, uh, when we started the project, we made a, a report where we actually, uh, by hand, <laughs> were taking all the different kind of statistics and found out that, that 19 billion is spent in lifelong learning uh, yearly basis, and that means that about 15.5 from the public sector and about 4 billion from the private sector. And the private sector money is underestimated because, as all you know, uh, the the money is uh, that we don't count because of this new kind of way of learning. We don't count every every penny or every minute that we spend on learning. So it's really not you can't say like really clearly that that the four million four billion we know that it's at least four billion but it's probably much more and it is much more but now because the, uh, we think that uh, in Finland we would still need to invest more in lifelong learning because in the adult life and adult kind of learning it's mostly mostly the companies that pay it. And therefore, how could we spend more to the lifelong learning in that phase? Because we have those uh, uh, challenges that we shouldn't take money away from the childhood kind of lifelong learning. And even the elderly people need it. So this is really uh, a challenge that how can we finance the lifelong learning in the future? Because it's, it's uh, very important to all people's life, even when you are a child and when you are elder, elderly people. So everybody needs it. And of course, in the future, also the need for decoupling the economic growth and well-being from overuse of natural resources will be a big challenge. And then the last one about the diversity. Uh, we all say that when we uh, started the basic school in Finland, so we, we were kind of similar similar kind of, they were all the Finns. It was quite easy to start to educate the Finns in a certain way. But now, actually, a few years ago, even the Ministry of Education and Culture, uh, like, it was almost a surprise that we have a lot of uh, immigrants also in Finland that they don't have even the basic education. And we didn't have, a, uh, have that kind of thing for adults. So it's totally different, the diversity, and it's not just the people, it's also our, our uh, structure of um, our company, companies. It's, it's different. We have a lot of freelancers and, and all, uh, all the system has, be, uh, has to be uh, planned in a different way than before. And, and in the picture, as I said, that uh, that the diversity will be the new normal. It's it's probably is already somewhere, but not in the whole Finland. So these were the three uh, like an uh, captured. But why is it very important at the moment? And as I said, that COVID nineteen uh, has doesn't uh, make them less important, but even more. And then I just have a couple of slides. I don't go very deep in them, but this is the, as I said, that we also describe the aim, aim of lifelong learning, and that's in uh, three different parts. And the number three is probably the one which, uh, which is mostly uh, because it's in what happens in the working, uh, during working life. So that's probably this morning's subject. As I said, that competence improves working life and working life in improves competence. And that's the thing what we try in Citra 
during the last year, we try to help uh, the societal actors in different areas to help the to develop the best preconditions in the world for network-based learning. And therefore, this uh, this morning is also, I think, about this. And this is, uh, I will just uh, send this material. So these are all the publications, what we have done during this, this project. And they, most of them are in Finnish, but I think there are many, many who speak Finnish also in the line. But the first one in the left side, the Towards Lifelong Learning, is the report why, what I'm talking at the moment. And I will uh, finalize my presentation with this uh, because we did the survey, survey uh, of lifelong learning uh, in Finland. That uh, how do the people think? So we started with your question and uh, like a big picture. And therefore, I will end this presentation with the slide that what we got from the results that if you had the opportunity, what would be the most two most meaningful ways to develop your skills in the future? And, and as we started discussing in the morning, so most answers were learning in work. So 42% of, uh, of those 2,000 uh, who answered to this questionnaire said that learning in work would be the most, most uh, meaningful way. And that means new tasks, learning by doing projects. And the next uh, most popular answer was that independent learning of new things that you try to acquire new information, for example, online. And that was my almost maybe a couple minutes too long, but try to be short presentation uh, to open up this, uh, this breakfast and, and the panel discussion. Thank you, Helena. Uh, it's very interesting to see how how the study uh, showed like what is lifelong learning and then what what people are answering here. So of course with learning it's always about the joy of learning like you can't learn if you are in this uh, <laughs> state of mind, right? <laughs> so uh but Helena please stay on the on the stage and next I'll invite Anni on the on the stage. So Anni Isomustajärvi is a builder of digital transformation. I'll try to add Anni as we go here. Anni. Yes, welcome. Welcome Anni. So Anni is lead she's leading the development and expansion of Be Healthy Digital Health Platform that enables digitalization for healthcare providers worldwide. Uh, and in Mehiläinen, and Anni has previously led a team building insight through data. And as many of you know, Mehiläinen is the biggest private social and healthcare provider in Finland that fully supports the patient pathway with digital tools to enable superior experience, monitoring of patient safety and outcomes. Welcome, Anni. We'll do a little little introduction round as we we first take all the panelists on the stage. And next we have Maria. Let's invite Maria Aho on the stage. So the past years, Maria has been building cloud skills within the Microsoft partner ecosystem and convincing organizations on the importance of skilling. From the beginning of March, she will be the business development manager Oh, you are now the business development manager at Barona IT, managing a recruitment training concept Elevated, uh, which sources and trains IT professionals with the latest technology skills for organizations in need of new capacity. Welcome, Maria. And then we invite Jonas back on stage. Uh, Jonas has already been introduced, so welcome, Jonas, on the stage. And Let's take a little uh, introduction round first and please introduce yourselves a little bit more and uh, please answer a question. What does professional development, lifetime learning, skills development mean to you personally? Let's see where Maria disappeared. 
but you can continue. We can we can go ahead. We will get Maria back on. The, <laughs> I'm sure. So, uh, Anni, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Satu, and kind of great to be be here. And it's an important topic, indeed. Uh, I'm an engineer as a background, and kind of by my education, I I think it kind of teaches you to be kind of curious and taking up uh, new things. I think many of my uh, study colleagues uh, said when they graduated that it feels like you don't know anything, but you have maybe some tools to be able to start learning. And I think that's kind of what professional development means to me is that kind of there is always the possibility to challenge yourself and and be curious and learn new things because so far I haven't felt as uh, that that kind of you know this thing what I'm doing right now that I I'm fully capable of doing everything that it covers and for my current role as well uh, when we are now expanding the software business of Mehiline and abroad uh, handling with Greek customers Italian customers now going to Middle East uh, and Africa uh, it kind of I must say that I cannot say that. Uh, everything I'm doing right now is something that I'm kind of I have done many times. So uh, definitely in the middle of learning process. Thank you, Anni. That's that's very interesting. So it's like sometimes people think that you are ready. Then you're ready, and then you know everything. But it's it's like an ongoing process. Process. So Helena, how about you? Uh, what does it mean? Uh, well. Well, I I I, lo I think I love learning uh, like different uh, kind of areas uh, that uh, because I'm a generalist, so I used I have been working in different uh, different areas. For example, uh, now I'm working in this lifelong learning kind of like an educational kind of field, but I've been working in a culture field, defense field, um, uh, social and healthcare field. And I, I always love to be able to get to the new field and get to know new people who are specialists in that field. So I think that's the, uh, because I have a consultant background before Citra and also in Citra I've been doing different kind of project work. So I think that's really something that I love that it's, it's like um, three months usually it takes that you get into the uh, into the field in that kind that you are able to discuss with people who are there. You never get to the deep, deep, uh, like a specialist in the field. But anyway, you are somehow the things start repeating themselves. So it takes about three months and then you are able to be there. You you never get to the go to the deep specialist. But uh, that's what I also love that I am not a deep specialist but I'm able to learn every day from those people who are. So I, I, I actually, I love that, that to be able to go to the different fields and learn every day. Thank you. Sounds good. And then Maria, would you like to be next? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I would like to echo what Helena just said. So also, also to me, uh, professional development isn't just, you know, taking a course and then being ready, but keeping really eyes and ears and especially mind open to 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 absorb new things, to absorb new technologies and keeping up to date, especially for, for me personally, having a background in sales and marketing that isn't really, it doesn't really come naturally to, you know, keep up with what's going on in tech. Uh, so, so the motivation is something that I personally struggle and I also see and have seen in, in my roles that that's most often the case with others too, even, even if they would be in, te in technical roles, how to actually motivate people to, you know, keep up with the learning. Um, and now what really motivates myself in my roles in, past in, at Microsoft and now at Barana IT is to enable and evangelize the ample resources we actually have available to keep uh, keep developing and and and, and upskilling. Uh, so at, at Microsoft, uh, where I used to evangelize a lot, how to to, to our partners, uh, how to actually um, keep their skills up to date. Um, I got to 
realize that there are so many things people can actually do. They can take actually courses or certifications or really like tangible assets uh, in the sense of, of the skilling, but also those soft skills um, are enabled in, in many fields. And now why I, I decided to join Barona IT running the elevated uh, program is because I find it uh, really important also to help people who are stuck uh, with their kind of a little outdated technology skills to to upskill them and then find companies who are in need in need of new talent in in that way so kind of finding matches then upskilling and then finding matches yeah right. matchmaker yeah matchmaking thank you maria and then jonas what does uh, professional development mean to you um, yeah, I can relate to what the previous uh, uh, previous uh, ideas were just presented. Um, I'm onto an engineer and uh, have been moving to a more general generalist sort of direction for the past few years. So uh, to me, uh, learning it, it's about um, being able to adapt to different situations and uh, perhaps benefit from different opportunities. Uh, it's, it creates independence sort of uh, from others. Not, not to mean that one should be in a silo or not be able to uh, uh, ask for help or anything, but anyway, it's uh, that sort of a uh, uh, way to autonomy. And uh, I think it's partly uh, preparation for different kinds of futures that you don't really know yet. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, on top of that, I think, I, I suppose, and I, from what I understand, learning is good for one's aging brain. Thank you. So going back to sort of the, the theme of this event, professional development as an enabler for business growth. So how do you see uh, the connection between professional development and business growth. What 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 is this? What kind of thoughts are rising from this? Well, well, I could probably uh, start start the thing with that comic picture. I don't know how many have seen it, but I think that makes the whole thing in a nutshell. There's a uh, comic where the CFO says that uh, what happens if we train our people and then they leave the company and then the HR director said that what happens if we don't and they stay and I, I think that's really really in a nutshell that what we all should think about the professional development that that do we as a companies or organization do we have a fort that we have people who lose uh, that they are not uh, up to date in their skills yeah i i think that's that's a great great anecdote uh, helena about this and kind of thinking about the healthcare sector as well where you have like 50 to 70 percent of the cost generated by people uh it would kind of mean that you would you know you have would have bought like an expensive machine and then you don't maintain it in a way uh and kind of it's like our business would basically stop if if those people wouldn't kind of develop and and work and and we as a company we have invested uh, kind of several million euros in the past years uh, to training our uh, executives for example and and at the same time we have experienced double digit growth of course it's hard to link those kind of directly together but we we do believe that if we wouldn't invest in our people, kind of also our growth and and uh, the new things we would be able to do, kind of that wouldn't be possible. Yeah, definitely. I can continue from here. Um, also at Microsoft last yeah last year alone, uh, Microsoft invested 100 million in in customer and partner skilling. And that actually tells quite a, an extensive story of how important they feel that, especially the certifications and technical capabilities that partners and customers build with the certification, they actually enable people um, 
adopting the technology better, being more innovative and productive in the sense. So it's quite obvious, isn't it? To, you know, when, when you study hard towards something, some, some degree or a certification assessment or a badge or whatever, you, you automatically kind of have to absorb the new skills and adopt the technologies. So you become more innovative, more uh, faster in, in your job and more efficient. Yeah, going back to that comic reference, I think it's about uh, uncovering the potential that everyone has and uh, perhaps take it take it its own uh, faith that it provides you with something good and something. Uh, well, it, w whatever happens after that, it's uh, it's basically a better alternative than not not encouraging people to learn and not investing in that. Yeah. Very good. And um, how is um, what does this per professional development mean, and what does it require in practice in your organizations? I can probably start. And now, sorry for reflecting again to Microsoft, my past employer, uh, but um, having been only a little over a year at Barna IT, I can't really tell that much about that that world. But anyway. At Microsoft, I can give practical examples of how to give uh, keep employees um, uh, skilled. So every role has has a certain set of courses that they need to take, and also a certain set of certifications needed. Um, and I mean, with every role, I mean even the CEOs, everybody, because they believe in in kind of leading by example and and equality. E equality in that sense so important when when devol um, evolving some kind of practic practicalities for this um learning is to be equal and to to lead by example and maybe also kind of on top of these kind of explicit trainings i think that is actually a bit kind of tricky kind of in some contexts it's easier to define like what kind of like explicit trainings are actually useful for you in that role and where you want to grow and what do you need to get there but I think kind of many things that are kind of equally important are a bit more subtle and it's kind of depending on the organizational culture um, it, it can go kind of very wrong or very right and if I'm thinking about what are the enablers in our organization that that kind of facilitate growing in your position and growing into new roles and taking up new responsibilities is that you, you need to be supported by the organization to take on challenges that you are not familiar with previously. And also it kind of requires that the organization enables that you can spend some time uh, in exploring those new things and, and trying out and maybe failing once. Our CEO always says that you can fail once, but please don't do it twice in the same thing. But this kind of mindset kind of enables people to try on new things because we all know that once you do the same thing all over again, you might become like really good at it. But uh, in a way, it would be a mistake from the organization to just kind of push you doing that, even though you might want to into something else I would probably say that uh, that in Citrum I think the most of the learning is learning by doing and it's in the work and it's um, I think it's uh, we 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 it's, uh, we are like a different kind of organization because we we hire a lot of temporarily people because uh, the pro that the areas they change so so we need all always those specialists who are very deep in the su subject and I think those uh, specialists who come to work to Citra they will come to a future house and and at the same time they will get a, quite a like a broad view or like what's happening in Finland and what's happening in different like sectors so it's like an like a school when you come to Citra so you see a lot and then those people who are working in Citra they will also when the new people come 
and they will bring the specialities in that subject. So I think that's the most that when you spend like a, a one, two, three years in, in, a, in a certain subject, then you uh, learn from the team because you have those specialists and you have the Citra people. And then, uh, of course, because the, there are quite <laughs> high challenges, so you need to like all the time uh, go through the material. For example, I have an example for a couple of weeks ago because I have one uh, doctor who is uh, or researcher in in like a finance area, and then I have one Citra working Citron old Citra working with him with her, and and he was saying that it's so amazing when when he's able to work with that specialist that how much every day that he's just <laughs> like amazed. So I think the most of it comes with the teamwork where different kind of uh, skills uh, are combined. And, and therefore you, and of course it's not just the Citra uh, skills, but also because we work so much with other different stakeholders. So, so especially with the stakeholders, I think there's also a huge amount of skill, skills that we get by working with the stakeholders. Yeah, so it's uh, it's kind of about a culture of sharing on top of uh, explicit uh, courses and, and and that sort of stuff. So we we for example we we have uh, let's say a learning community that works in our digital channels, but also uh, a certain amount of time set up during each week where we explicitly, explicitly share what we've learned to each other. It's about, about peer peer learning and peer coaching and sparring. And what you said earlier uh, about the organizational culture, um, I don't remember which, who, who said it, but about the organizational culture, oh, only you said it, uh, and sort of uh, creating this space and allocating the having the structures that support learning. Uh, do you have any like concrete examples of that? How do you how can an organization support the learning in order when when the when the goal is to grow as a business? So what are the actual tools? How, what to do as an organization? Yeah, that's that's a tricky question, um, and and it had kind of and a question about like how do you actually kind of start building up that kind of culture i think kind of uh having kind of couple of those explicit punchlines that you believe as an organization like for example that kind of uh the show never stops until the pat lady sings or uh kind of and then also that kind of you can kind of fail fail once but preferably not twice in the same thing uh, so those help and also maybe kind of encouraging the supervisors to really kind of seek for the new areas and encourage people to kind of suggest themselves for the new things they want to explore and try out uh, so that you are able to give room for that when there are new opportunities. So maybe kind of those two things have worked for us at least. Well, um, I, th I think uh... I think we are probably going to have a little bit more structures because uh, I think in Citra it's, it's quite difficult to have the, we, ha we have that kind of competence networks that different kind of uh, things are developed, but it's very difficult because uh, uh, people have such an, they are such, such an enthusiastic of their own work and the work and the goals, what the team is doing. So it's it's really, it, uh, it, we have to have a little extra effort to be able to like change the uh, information and the knowledge between different teams. And, and all, Citra is like an organization which changes also, always a lot when we have a new president. And, and of course, when there's a new president, everything is in, inside is always smoothing and speeding up. <laughs> and, and when the president is going out, then uh, everything is a little bit stabilized. And now we have the new president, uh, uh, Jyrki Katainen, who has been uh, us with a year now and and he has appointed now a C new COO 
we we never used to have a COO, but now he has appointed one, and Nina Honkala is starting uh, her position uh, in the next month, in the beginning, and she's also a person who has been um, uh, developing the competence network system in our in our uh, organization. So I'm really like looking forward that that Citra is going to the next level level inside also with the competence kind of building that how are we able to because uh, in Citra even though we work in different areas uh, the different kind of tools how do we make the impact to the society they are actually the same so even in different projects we need the say we use the same kind of tools so that's really something that we should uh, we have done it uh, a, a certain points, but not as much as we should do. So I'm really looking forward uh, in the Citra for the next years that I think we will speed up in our internal competence development. Yes, as we can hear, there are like many terms kind of rela related to the to this competence development, upskilling, business growth, business transformation. They're all linked to because people are actually doing it people are the business so um like are there any examples of like how the structure the organizational structure could support i'm kind of trying to dig some uh, concrete examples of how an organization could support let's say you have a company x there and they want to really grow go international what can they do what are the con concrete tips that you could give give to uh, the, the organization in regards of professional development for growth? Yeah, so I think that is a good question. Like when you actually want to uh, start doing something completely different than what you have been doing previously and like exploring new business areas, for example. And this is actually a really tricky topic because it also comes down to how established businesses renew themselves and and kind of find out new areas for growth. Uh, I was actually previously working uh, with with Kasvuryhmä kind of who is facilitating these Finnish middle-sized companies um, uh, in their growth uh, ventures and from the experiences from Mehilän and Kasvuryhmä I can say that the absolute master recipe for that is to give a team uh, enough independency and enough support for actually doing things maybe even as a standalone from the existing company because otherwise you are just kind of stuck uh, with the way of kind of establishing you know, keeping up the kind of the cash flow business or the established business and it's a different mindset like starting to explore new things uh, you might spend money in a totally different way you are hiring in a different way uh, you are trying and failing it, it, it's a comp you, so you need to keep, set up a separate team and have like enough autonomy there and encourage them to engage also with other companies to totally new way of doing things yeah that I, I i just go maria okay, yeah i continue and echo on that so i that's more certainly so that when you're um going to new areas you need to give the freedom uh, but uh, usually when, when people, when, if we uh, look at people in their current positions and current areas, um, the most common obstacle that I, I've heard in the past is that how to actually prioritize customer billable work and then learning and devoting time to that. And I think there the leadership uh, takes a place and has to take a place that how, how do the leaders then you know know um, uh, establish models or you know learning weeks or calendar reservations for mm -hmm. the whole company for to devote time time for learning because it's really hard for an, an individual to you know prioritize where should I put my time is this more important than the customers or you know yeah it's not not uh, enough to only uh allocate time and specify how much one can spend on learning you need like different frameworks and perhaps show example that i'm taking time off to learn and that kind of that kind of stuff 
this is very uh, interesting discussion is just on my table this week because we have opened up an like an application for to get get finance for this subject uh, for different areas in Finland and we we thought that we would get like 30 or 40 different applications well but we got 80 mm -hmm. so so I have been reading 80 applications during this week and and the point and and we were we are able to finance like 800,000 but the applications amount was 8.5 million so so a lot of people are <laughs> under and a lot of uh, companies and and education institution are in this subject and the main idea what we are financing is that that how to improve the working life that the working life improves competence and competence improves working life so actually just that question what you asked we are trying to find a new models in the how they pilot in different like how to for example in the how to training institution and companies how they together can build a new model how to do this so this is really something what many many companies and many training institutions are trying to find out that what would be the new kind of way of working that the learning would be in the in the way in the same same kind of picture and and i think that's in uh, in this and in the couple of years i think we we will go further and and in what Anni said about small and medium-sized companies that's uh, one of the big biggest problem because they don't have like the resources for that kind of normal old-fashioned that they go to courses and they have the HR director but they need some kind of other ways that how can you learn more easily that it's in the work that it's not like a separated kind of uh, kind of doing and and that's really something that we are in a couple of next week we try to um, maybe to five to ten different uh, project we are giving money that to how to develop that kind of model yeah, and kind of yeah that's that's a really really good good point like how to really and I think Sato the question about like how to really facilitate that in the structures and Jonas what you were saying that it's not kind of enough that you just have the kind of freedom to hey spend like 10 percent of your time in the kind of learning and I'm just starting to think that what are the kind of really practical things where we do things is that we have for example forums where we kind of gather teams from different places to celebrate what have been accomplished so they're sharing stories about like what was done in the recent month for example and going into kind of really details also how the journey went it's typically not a straightforward thing so it has been like a bumpy ride and then kind of i think kind of having these like specific forums also across the teams with like a, a set agendas uh, it has helped us uh, in doing that as well and then you realize that oh they are working in something like that so I should kind of probably speak with them more so yes okay uh, I don't know maybe maybe we have time for a little little one more question I don't know if we have any questions from the chat uh, from people um, but I think like one of the most important things when talking about professional development for growth is the investment. It's always an investment on, on the people and on the, it requires resources, right? So how to, this uh, question actually came from the, from the audience, like uh, during the registrations. So how to justify the time and money in uh, in professional development in your companies maybe as i said all, already er, earlier investing time and and, and upskilling is, is um in the end enabling you to be more innovative and more more um pro productive so it, it will increase you know the competitiveness of, of the whole company but also if if every company in finland will continue doing this we we will continue to be as a nation um the leader in innovation and competitive or competitiveness so yeah that should justify 
uh, and I would also say that if it's, for example, I I had had some team members going to, like for example, uh, learning InDesign, how to use it, and I heard from my team members that that the other people in the course they were just thinking that when when are they able to practice the skills what they learn. And my, and my point was that my people, they really had a deadline for the new brochure that they have to produce. And they said that it was a completely different kind of attitude for learning because you need, you know that that tool is something that you are going to use and, and it's the motivation is totally different. And that's really something I think that when you go to a course that if you don't have any like connection what you use the skills for. So it's really like, a, uh, it could be a little bit, of course, there can be some idea that you can use, but it could be a waste of time if you can't connect the learning, what you get outside of the job. It's like somehow to your, what you are doing. Exactly. We're closing to, um, to close this <laughs> event. So thank you, Helena, Anni, Jonas and Maria for joining the panel discussion. This is a, such a short time, so I wish we had like three hours to discuss this, but maybe we'll organize something else in the future. So thank you so much for joining the panel and thank you for all the participants uh, for joining, joining uh, the Women in Tech uh, event. Now, um, We'd like to receive, we'd love to actually receive any feedback on the event. And we also want to send little giveaways to the participants. So please, um, my colleague Katri will add a little link to the chat. So please click on that and, and share your uh, views. What did you think about the event? Did you like it? What was valuable for you? And if you want a little giveaway, then please leave your address it will be just a tiny little something we want to we want to send uh, and now if if you would love to continue networking the networking space uh, is is uh, open until let's say 20 past nine so so we can continue there but thank you everyone and have a lovely weekend thanks thanks thank you thank you thank you